Privy manual muscle testing both extensor pulsus longus and brevis kind of together. But we're going to start off with longus. So because longus goes to the distal phalanx, I'm going to have my partner extend her thumb completely, add a little bit of radial deviation and a little bit of extension. Good. So I'm going to let you do that on your own all the way through. Okay. And for the resistance and the brake test, I'm going to basically hold her wrist into a little bit of radial deviation there. And I'm going to ask her to hold her thumb in position as I'm going to resist against that. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now starting with the thumb relaxed and the wrist in neutral, I'm going to need to push against my finger all the way up, thumb up. Good. Add that radial deviation in at the end there. Good. Let's try that one more time, a little bit smoother this time. So extend against me, extend, 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 and the wrist motion. Excellent. Now this is going to look very, very similar for brevis since they have similar pathway and function, except I'm going to be adding my resistance to the proximal phalanx instead of the distal phalanx. If you can, it's okay if you can't, you can leave that distal phalanx flexed as you extend back. So if you can, try doing that all the way and then add our wrist action at the end. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to show you. We'll extend here, radial deviate, and a little bit of wrist extension. And go ahead. Good. I'm going to take her part way through the motion. I'm going to be resisting on that proximal phalanx. Hold my position for five, four, three, two, and one. And again, the concentric pushing against me all the way through that motion. Good. Now for the length for these two, it's again using that same principle of including or not including the interphalangeal joint. We'll start with longus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll her thumb into the palm of the hand using flexion. So flexion in all those joints. I'm going to tuck it in and then I'm going to add in a little bit of ulnar deviation and flexion of her wrist like so. For brevis it's going to be basically exactly the same so we'll just go through the words of that again except I'm not going to include the distal phalanx. So I'm going to start by flexing at the metacarpophalangeal joint I'll add flexion at the carpal metacarpal joint. I'm going to add in ulnar deviation and a little bit of flexion at the wrist. And that will be our length position for extensor pollicis brevis. We're going to go through the length of extensor pollicis longus and brevis here with this hand. So basically what we're going to do is start off with longus. So because it did extension at the interphalangeal, the metacarpophalangeal and the carpal metacarpal joint, I'm going to start by flexing her finger in, curling it all the way in at all those joints. Then I'm going to add in some ulnar deviation and a little bit of flexion of her wrist joint. So this would be for the longus. I'm going to take her back out. For extensor pollicis brevis, it's the same thing, except I'm going to leave out the interphalangeal joint. So I'm going to start by flexing her metacarpal phalangeal joint and her carpal metacarpal joint, and then take her wrist into some ulnar deviation and a little bit of flexion at the end there. So this would be the length position for extensor pollicis brevis.